my prayer today, yeah. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. I am your host, Bishop Bobby T. Hutnall, Senior Pastor of Life in the Word Church. Welcome to another segment of It's Time for a Restoration. Listen, I believe that God is doing something mighty in your life as well as mine. Will you let me pray for you? And uh, then we'll get into some exciting things inclusive of the Word of God. Father, I thank you for those who are watching me right now. And I pray, God, your ministry angels are encamped about them, keeping them, God, in your way. I pray in the name of Jesus that this man, this woman, this boy, this girl who's watching me, that you will bless their lives right now. I pray, God, for prosperity, for healing, for deliverance. God, I pray for marriages to come back together. I pray for children to be restored. I pray for connection in family. I pray for spiritual divine connection through your Holy Spirit. God, take us where no man has gone before. Show us your mighty works. We thank you for it and we give you all the praise and all the honor for the miracle that has been wrought into somebody's life right now. I'm seeing that somebody's getting healed. Somebody's getting delivered instantly. Somebody's getting set free. Somebody's got some good news in the mail to share that God has blessed you with. Well, to God be the glory, and I pray over your strength right now and your divine healing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. God bless you. Listen, I am so excited uh, to be with you. I tell you, my mind is uh, tremendously at peace. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, my body uh, is completely being healed and being made whole through the blood of Jesus Christ and taking medicine. <laughs> I heard one bishop say prayer and medicine <laughs> is doing a number and good work in my life. So to God be the glory for the great things he's done. And let me encourage somebody that's watching me while I'm thinking about that. Um, you know, uh, God is, is using science and God is using uh, creativity and uh, the knowledge uh, of doctors and medicine uh, in this land to help us. So I'm encouraging somebody, um, you, you know, you, you would feel better if you, if you take a pill, take the medicine that you are required to take. There's no sin against it. Uh, have faith in God, but nevertheless, uh, you can take your medicine as well. Uh, for many of us who are saying, uh, well, I don't want to take any, I'm not messing with your faith. You know, you got to do what you believe God is telling you to do. Um, but medicine and, and asking God uh, to allow your body to react to the medicine in a very positive way, I, I, think, I think that's putting God first and, uh, and certainly acknowledging Him, and He sure will direct your path. So I don't know who I'm talking to, uh, but maybe somebody needed that this morning. Uh, it's nothing wrong. It's no sin uh, to take medicine uh, if the Lord has not uh, bid you not to take medicine, but uh, uh, medicine can help you. Uh, of today's uh, herbs and spices and things uh, naturally that are grown, um, you, we should put, we should inundate our bodies with these healthy, healthy substance, and uh, it will do us some good. Amen. God bless you, and I thank God for that and for you this morning. Listen, um, before we get into the word, and we're going to be talking about again intimacy of a prayer life. I tell you this, this intimacy thing has really blown the charts uh, in my ministry, and, uh, and I am really connecting with God uh, in a very powerful way. Um, it is causing me to think better, to believe God, and to react, <laughs> react differently uh, to what the enemy is doing. You know, I've been the kind of individual uh, to react to uh, when people do things to me and react to them and wanting to get them back, take vengeance and be angry, you know, but thanks be unto God, since I have uh, been, been establishing intimacy with the Lord, uh, I don't have to behave that way. I don't have to react uh, to people in, in a negative way. Um, Jesus was very focused. He was very focused on his mission and uh, to accomplish the things that uh, uh, he, would, uh, he, would, uh, he would do while he was on earth. And, uh, and I'm so glad about that. And I think, believe that's what God uh, expects of us, to be focused on what he wants us to do and accomplish while he's given us uh, this life uh, to live. Will you believe God with me? Will you believe God to take care of your life 
and stop reacting uh, to what people are saying about you or to what things are being done. And trust God. Trust God. Pray over those areas that are troubling you. Believe God that the Lord will deal with if there are any enemies. They're not yours. They're enemies of God. The Lord said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So when people come against the prophet of God and say all kinds of things that they clearly don't know what they're talking about, um, then, uh, you know, they got to deal with God. They got to answer to God. If you are a real prophet or prophetess, if you're a real woman uh, or man of God, you really are not tuning in to what people say about you. You are really not about that at all. You're not chasing rumors. Uh, you don't care what people have to say. I mean, it's unfortunate, uh, but, you know, you're just not going to be distracted. That's what Nehemiah did. He would not come down all the wall, off the wall when the uh, uh, Tobiah and, and uh, uh, the enemies of his day, uh, I forget the other name of those groups, <laughs> but anyway, they, they would not, he would not come down off the wall. He would not subject himself to what they were trying to say to him and uh, in all of the distractions that they were trying to be. He made himself affirmed in the will of God that he would not come down from building the wall that he was instructed to do because God gave him a mission and he was going to complete it. Wow, who am I talking to? God has given you a mission and you must complete it despite all of the noise, despite all of the naysayers, despite all of the, the voices, uh, the contrary voices that are trying to come up against you, I'm telling you, stop listening to the contrary wind. The Bible says when Peter listened to the contrary wind, he started sinking. And that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. If you don't learn to resist the devil and to ignore him, then you're going to fall prey and you're going to find yourself sinking because God is trying to perfect himself in you. Who am, I <laughs> Who am I talking to? God is trying to perfect himself in you. So he's teaching you to resist the enemy and focus on the things of God. Because you know why? Because every time we pull away from the things of God and we start turning to, to the naysayers and we start turning to the voices of other people, then we become distracted from our mission. That, that's all the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to acknowledge him. He wants you to listen to his voice. He wants you to be distracted towards him. And see, hence, if you don't acknowledge God, then God can't direct your path according to that Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And that's what Satan is trying to do. He's trying to take you off your path. But to God be the glory, you got to say it. Like the songwriter says, and, and I believe in scripture, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. And the song goes, just like a tree planted by the rivers of water, I shall not be moved. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Listen, um, I want to talk to you for a few minutes, <coughs> excuse me, about um, supporting uh, uh, this work. Uh, and what I mean this work is... Uh, supporting the broadcast, um, the, the uh, uh, address should, in Faith Television, uh, Faith Network should come up on your screen in a few minutes. And, you know, I, 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 I believe God. Listen, you know, the Bible says, let not a man think on his own things, but on the things of others. And I fully am persuaded that, uh, you know, you ought to try to be a blessing to other people and, uh, and to other people businesses. And I want to challenge that if you're a businessman watching me, I want to challenge you to sow a seed of, of whatever you may believe in your heart. Now, there's two ways you can do it. Now, of course, this is a for-profit business, uh, Faith Network or Faith Television, and uh, you can't get a write-off from sowing into Faith Network. But you know what? I encourage you to do it just because just because you got faith that if you bless this network and help this network because it's doing a great job. I mean, look at all the programmings that come on. Joyce Myers, uh, 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 Bishop Bobby T. Hutton, <laughs> no. 
uh, uh, Babby's house in uh, Dr. Charles St uh, Stanley. I mean, great preachers uh, come on this broadcast and it's on 24 seven. Do you hear what I'm saying? This broadcast, listen, if the world can have all of this foolishness and mess and, you know, and I'm not mocking everything that comes on television because there's some good programmings that I even enjoy. Um, and, uh, but I believe we should have, we should have a Christian network. Uh, we got the Word Channel and we got other channels out there, but this is our local channel, our local community. Those of you, those of you that are watching me from the Woodstock community, and uh, uh, Stanton, as far as it goes, uh, south of 81. And then you got people up in Washington, D.C., Harrisonburg, perhaps, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Winchester. And, uh, you know, just as far north as uh, this broadcast go. Listen, I just believe if you would sow a seed and just encourage this network, yeah, it's a for-profit network, but so is see. I, I come on this air and I do it by faith. No, I, I, I don't have, you, you, know, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not even going to word it like this. I tell you, I have everything that I need. And God has blessed me and afforded me the opportunity to be on this broadcast. And, um, uh, and you know, and I have to trust God every week to pay the bill. Every week. Every week, and I like it like that because I'm, I'm praying and I'm thanking God that you know I can give these people a check to cover uh, the expenses uh, for this broadcast. And and I tell you, there were times I didn't even know we were gonna make it. <laughs> I didn't even know we were gonna be able to do it, but I stayed stayed on and I held on, and uh, and prayerfully we're budgeting it into our um, monthly expense as a part of our outreach. But we have to trust God for the donors to sow into the ministry so we can pay the bill because we think that uh, we're doing a worthy thing. We think that the message going out into the airways and to our local community is a good effort. So one, I'm gonna ask if you're a business person, sow into faith television. Just, just sow whatever amount, just encourage them for the work that they're doing for bringing all of these dynamic preachers on this air and to inundate us with the word of God. So if you're a Christian business owner, uh, sow into the ministry, sow in this, into this particular ministry. Now you won't get a write off, but uh, I tell you, God will bless you. <laughs> I know he will. He's going to bless you <clears throat> uh, to help defray costs and expenses uh, that this television broadcast may have. And, uh, and they may not, you know, they may have some people that they may have to carry. Um, I remember a time when I didn't have it, and they carried us. And uh, so we're, we're, we're doing our due diligence to make sure we pay our bills. But, you know, when you're, when you're a nonprofit and you're trying to do a work like this, um, you know, financially it can be challenging. It can be very challenging. But nevertheless, I don't come on this air to beg of you. Um, I don't come, come on this air to, to try to you know, wrangle money out of you. Um, only thing I can do is the Bible says is to ask. It's to ask you to sow a seed. So if you're a business owner and, uh, and you have a business, um, I want you to sow into this business um, and maybe give a tithe or, you know, any type of offering uh, to encourage the producer and the owners and let them know that you appreciate uh, this broadcast coming on the air. Uh, each each Sunday and each day. I'm sorry, each day. I come on on Sundays, um, but each day. And then also, if you want to direct your your tithes or offering and you want a ministry to invest in, um, I would encourage you to look into our ministry, Life in the Word Church. Uh, you can look it up. We are nonprofit, um, you know, uh, nonprofit with a legitimate uh, 501c3 tax write-off. Um, and you can look us up through Internal Revenue Service. And, um, and, you know, let the Lord touch your heart on sowing into this particular ministry. Now, this is what I'm going to do. If you will sow into this ministry, you know, number one, it'll help us pay our bills. 
and, uh, and, and then I'm going to sow an extra, uh, extra 10% into whatever you send to us, um, a 10%, uh, pay our bills, and then I'm going to do a 10% off of what you give to us. I want to sow it into this ministry. Wow. I kid you not. That is my word. Um, then that will earn you a legitimate write-off. Uh, if those of you that want, that need a write-off, it is also the end of the year. Um, 2018 is fastly approaching, and many of you out there are going to need a write-off. Uh, and uh, so why not us, okay? Let the Lord touch your heart on that. Um, again, I'm not begging it. I'm just, I'm not begging. I'm just asking um, to consider uh, this uh, nonprofit organization. Now, let me tell you some of the other things that we're doing. It's not just about the church that we have. Um, but we have other ministries. Um, we have a uh, Fathers in Training Institute. I'm very happy to talk to you about that. That Fathers in Training Institute, um, we go into four jails, uh, Northwestern Regional Jail. Um, we'll be going back to uh, Rappahannock, uh, Shenandoah, and Warren, RSW uh, Regional Jail. Um, then we go to uh, the Stafford Men's Diversion Center in Stafford, Virginia. And we also go to the Harrisonburg Men's Diversion Center in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Met just the other day, <coughs> excuse me, I graduated 14 fathers from that program. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Give a hand to that. 14 fathers who sat with me in a 16-week course some of these guys have never been gone to school or very little education. And because they love their children, they participate in this fatherhood program. And we graduated them. We bought food from the local wood grill there in Harrisonburg and had the food catered in. We invited their families. At this last graduation, we had a family of four who drove five hours to come and witness their son graduate from this fatherhood program. And they did it because this guy has never done anything positive. Uh, he, almost, he almost got killed in an accident. Uh, he stayed drunk out there in the street. Uh, but he has done something positive in becoming a part of the Fathers in Training Institute. So that's a very positive story. And um, so maybe you want to help in helping me cater the food or sow into the ministry to help cater the food. Uh, the, you know, the, the uh, catering company, they only give us a, maybe a 10% uh, discount um, and the ministry has to pay for the food. And we don't charge them anything. We give them a nice certificate. Um, we also uh, give them a co-parenting class, which is a state approved class um, where, uh, you know, it, it would cost them money if they took this class outside of the jail through the Fathers in Training program. We're able to offer that co-parenting class for free. Now, it's not free to us because we got to pay. We have to pay through another company. But this is the kind of things that I am doing and our ministry is doing to help fragmented families, to help restore fathers back to their children and their children back to their father. That's a prophetic. That's in the book of Malachi. Returning the hearts of the father to their children and the children to their father. This is a prophetic ministry that we are accomplishing here. And then we also have um, our housing ministry. Our housing ministry. Oh, let me, let me, before I talk about the housing, we do motherhood the same way. We have seven mothers at the Northwestern Regional Jail that we are helping that we're offering motherhood classes, a 16-week course. Same thing, we're doing a graduation with them when they graduate after 16 weeks. Awesome to see these mothers who've been in, who, who are incarcerated, hugging, hugging their children, loving on their children, and, um, and families coming together crying, and oh my goodness, it's a beautiful sight. It is a beautiful sight. And uh, I tell you, you can call the jails yourself and they'll vouch. They'll tell you about our program, tell you that it's happening there. And you know what? We're just doing our part to bring families together. So we got the fatherhood and the motherhood. <coughs> Excuse me. And then also what we do is we have a housing program. We house these fathers and the, not the mothers yet. We're, we're hoping to do a mother's house, but we house these fathers. 
and, uh, and we provide a place to stay for them. And we guarantee employment. Yes, <laughs> guarantee it. I've not had a man, I've had hundreds of men come out of this program, come into this program, come out of prison, and they come into this program and they are guaranteed a job within two days. Within two days. If they come into the program on Friday, you, you know, we usually orientate them, then Saturday and Sunday, uh, it's like, you know, we rest. But that Monday, they are uh, receiving an interview and that Tuesday, they're in orientation. Guarantee. Guarantee it. As long as they have the proper ID, they are guaranteed employment. And I have not failed in that mission. To God be the glory. I have not failed in that, in that mission of helping each man, each man that come into our program, into the housing program, get job. Guaranteed employment. And so we help these men. We provide them a place to stay. And uh, we help them get on their feet. And we hope to do uh, with the motherhood as well. But listen, until today... I've not begged anybody. I've not gone out and, you know, asked the, the world for money. I've not done fundraisers or anything of that sort because God hadn't led me to do that. But today, uh, he's leading me to ask you to sow into this ministry because we are restoring lives. We are helping families. So if you need a write-off uh, for this year, um, consider calling me. My number is coming up on your screen. Call me and, uh, you know, we'll talk. And, and, you know, this is a worthy cause. We are getting these men, you know, off the streets. We're getting up. We have a substance abuse program, substance abuse prevention program. And we have volunteers who come in and teach and try to minister the gospel and the clinical aspect of being delivered, or, or we call it on the road to recovery. Uh, getting off of cocaine and alcohol and, and uh, heroin and all of these addictive drugs that are out there. Um, our program is seeking to help them. So I said a lot and I do apologize. Uh, I hope you're not offended that I took a little bit of time to ask of you to sow into this ministry. And uh, during the uh, rest of the year, I'll be continuing to talk about this because, you know, we want to Listen, I want to give you an opportunity. The Bible said it's more of a blessing to give than to receive. And I am constantly giving. I am constantly giving. And the Lord spoke to me the other day. and He said, I'm going to give you seed. I'm going to give seed to the sower found in the book of Isaiah. And I believe that's what God is going to do. Through you, he's going to give me seed so I can sow more into other people's lives. So will you take a minute and pray over what the Lord would have you to give? That address is coming up on your screen right now. This, you can send your checks. Um, we'll send you a letter um, uh, of a write-off and uh, of your amount uh, with our letterhead. Uh, and again, you can look us up uh, through the IRS website, and you'll find it, Life in the Word Church of Jesus Christ. Make your checks payable to Life in the Word Church. And, um, and you know, we're going to be a blessing. We're going to help as many people as we can. Um, the project is called Restorative Hope Project, um, or you can directly uh, sow your seed into the Restorative Hope Project. And uh, either way, uh, your funds will be received and, uh, and you'll help a lot of people. You'll help. No, I'm not doing worldwide things yet, um, but I hope to take fatherhood into Africa. Africa is being inundated with so many children um, who are uh, homeless and uh, who are uh, in, uh, in shelters. And, uh, and, and father's, father absenteeism is great all over Africa. And, uh, and so God has touched my heart to go to some parts of Africa and share this fatherhood work. Maybe the Lord would touch you to sow into this ministry so I can go over there and minister to them. But you know what? We got a serious need right in the U.S. of A. <laughs> We have a serious need, and I want, I can't go into all of these jails, so I want to duplicate myself uh, by doing some training with some responsible people who care about fathering and motherhood, and, uh, and I want to start dispatching uh, people throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia and wherever people would want this fatherhood program. It is an excellent curriculum uh, by Dr. Jeffrey Johnson, a, a great man of God there in Washington, D.C., 
and uh, he trained me, and I'm looking forward uh, to training others. All right? Well, I know I hadn't given you a scripture, but I want to try to give you at least one verse of scripture uh, found in James chapter 4, verse number 1. He says, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from you, come from your desire for pleasure, that war in your members? Wow. Look at what he says. Verse number two, you lust and do not have, you murder and, and covet and cannot and can and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Verse three says, yet you do not have because you do not ask. The key to your blessing. The key to your blessing in God is simply going into prayer and asking. Just like I, I made the appeal to you today. And trusting God that as you are asking, it's not, you're not asking these things to, to consume it or make the lust that you have within you worse. You know, I, I want a car so I can get around and pick up women. No, God is not going to give you a car <laughs> or he doesn't want to give you a car for that reason. Um, I want a job so I can have money and go out and, and, and buy wine and liquor and cocaine and drugs. God is no fool. He doesn't want to give you these things to consume it upon your lustful desire. God want to bless you so you can bless others. So I say to you today, if you want God to bless you, know how to go and ask of him. The Bible says, seeking ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7. Shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh shall receive. Yeah, that's what it says. For everyone that asks shall receive. And that's all we have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is ask of God. Listen, my time is gone. <laughs> it's gone. But I tell you what, uh, we're going to have a part two to this segment. So uh, just continue to listen to me next Sunday. Uh, I'll be wearing the same clothes, but, <laughs> but it's going to be a part two. And I'm going to stay on this air and continue on with part two. So we're going to pick up where we left off from the word of God. So join me next Sunday. Don't forget. Also, don't forget to join the prayer line on Monday morning, 6 o'clock a.m. you got to get on that prayer line. God is blessing. God is moving through our prayer line. And, of course, if you want to see us at the church, the address is there. You can come and meet us at the uh, 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 Robert E. Ehrler Middle School. Well, my God from glory, uh, until the next Sunday, uh, we'll pick it up, this scripture. Uh, God bless you. This is our time of restoration. I'm